need scissors? Do you have scissors? Huh? Scissors. Good morning. Hey, great Monday. Great Tuesday morning. The what of you? Scissors. Oh, here. It is a beautiful morning in the city of Brownsville, Texas. Morning, Gail. He's tearing up a carpet we just bought. I think he's going to tear the carpet. I don't know why. Good morning, good morning. Wait to say good morning. Vicente, good morning, good morning. And uh, you're probably going to be a short show this morning. Um, good morning, good morning, Angel. The time. <coughs> Alguien te está ponchando las llantas, bro. You know, it's true. This is the second tire uh, that I've gotten uh, screwed up in. But again, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. To you, happy birthday, dear Angel. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, man. And uh, have an amazing day and a great rest of the week. It's your birthday week. Enjoy it. Um, yesterday, no, last the night before yesterday, my uh, is it the PSA, that pressure or tire pressure? I don't know what it's called. What? PSI, PSI thing was on the low side, and uh, I, I, I got like, what the hell? And sure enough, another flat tire. And this time, a big old clavo and a metal object in the damn tire. I'm going like, and I told the people from uh, <laughs> from uh, <laughs> from Ocean, <laughs> I told the people from uh, um, discount. Uh -huh. eh? Discount tire. You were telling the people from discount tire. If it's a coincidence or it was on purpose. I think, yeah, I think that they're going out around Brownsville and throwing clouds on the street or something. Uh, because they sure, sure as hell had a lot of business, man. They were packed. Do you drive on the sidewalk mainly? <laughs> but no, it's, you know, there's so much construction being done here uh, in the city of Brownsville. It's like every other street, uh, they're having, they're doing something to it. And uh, it just does, it doesn't, doesn't help. Yeah, doesn't help. And uh, the the worst street is um, International. Have you did, did you uh, did you have a chance to go down International when you were here? Um, I kind of passed through it because I was down southmost and I did see the construction, and I I just went through all the way to southmost towards like 14th Street. Yeah, just save it, just to avoid it. Well, yeah, it's it's weird because when you're uh, going you know from um, from here like after you pass the expressway and to get like the rest of international yep. almost, it just goes to the side you know for that the two lanes now is like one each but yep. at night time it, it's really hard to see that little curve and there's that big old median thing that they have they're protecting the individuals that are out there working and i said like man anyone could just continue to go straight and go right through the medium because it's just so dark Good thing you have those those sensors. <laughs> it's a good thing to have a Tesla. <laughs> it's a good thing to have a Tesla, and uh, I'm still in love with the car. Uh, I think the car is just amazing. Uh, actually, would mind uh, hopefully in the next couple of months getting another one. That's horrible. Why? Why would you get two? Uh, one is good. Two is better. <laughs> One of the mistakes that I made uh, when I bought the Tesla was that I uh, bought it with, because I leased it. So I got it for 10,000 miles a year. Yeah. And if you si te pasas de las 10 mil millas al año, you know, you get charged per mile or something. Yeah. Like a quarter a quarter per mile or something. Buy out, out of it? Out of it? Out of it? What? Okay. 
buy out out of it? You just pay like at the very end of the lease. You just pay like a certain amount, and then you just keep the car. Well, yeah, something like that. But I don't plan to keep the car. One of one of the reasons why uh, I thought that getting a lease would be a better option, Sam, is because you don't know uh, how long these batteries are going to last, and why do you want a car that's batteries all messed up? For it's like five years, and everybody's selling it like at four and a half. Know what? Or that's why everybody's selling it right before the warranty expires. Yeah. So, so I, you know why? I, I'd rather just uh, lease it, and then in three years, just get, a, get just get a new one. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Well, by the I think, original, you don't have to be dealing with no nonsense batteries. <laughs> and, uh, and by then, I think that uh, the the uh, Technology, you know, Elon Musk is just, I mean, he's always out there. Uh, uh, but yeah, it, by then it, they should have like way better batteries. Way better but batteries. It's going to take a while before it gets to that point. Yeah. And better, uh, you know, better. Uh, batteries are like hell expensive. Well, and, be and better and better things on the vehicle, you know. So uh, I, I bought the Y and um Someone said, and I, I kind of like the X. The X looks a little bit more sporty, you know, and more expensive. So I thought, well, maybe after three years, me animo, and I'll think about, you know, is they getting the X, it's, you know, maybe. But a friend of mine that worked there uh, said, you know what? It's not worth it. The Y is a better car. And I go like, oh, that's good to know. And uh, it is an amazing car. It's And it's nothing expensive either. El Chief Sam, El Boy oh. Toy, six. Sporty nerd, <laughs> the adrenaline one, huh? the adrenaline nerd. <laughs> it's great. Well, you know, I, I got into this thing, and um, uh, a friend of mine, uh, actually uh, Jay Nagy, uh, and uh, his uh, wife, they said like, yeah. you're just like the, the 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 techie type. So we thought that you'd have a, be a good fit with a Tesla, and very true. Uh, you know, I, I like to upgrade my phone every time the phone comes out, the, the newest watches and stuff. It's just amazing. Hey, is it true that the one you have has a camera? The what? This one? Yeah, the Ultra. Yeah, underwater? Yeah, does it have a camera? Yeah, it, it, it tells you how deep you're going into the water. Does it have a camera? Oh, no. Supposedly on the little, whatever you call it, knob if you pull it all the way out it takes a picture no it has a camera supposedly i don't think so sure how true that is i'll i'll, I'll look into it <laughs> now you got me interested uh sup sam sup man Bruno, saint joe people taking over well let me say what uh you know that i, I don't know if you knew this sam i'm running for appraisal district and um did you see what happened yesterday what happened? The Fraser Drist District, all the people that signed up for the Republican Party. Oh, uh -uh. oh, you're you're <laughs> you're about to get surprised. The Republican Party chose three uh, real estate agents or people that are are within the real estate agency uh, business, and which they are supporting, and mainly the North Cameron County Republicans. Yeah. I, I went to the meeting yesterday and, you know, I went to the meeting, uh, because, you know, we got invited to speak and everything. So I said, yeah, I'll go to me. Uh, I, I had a, an emergency right when I got there. I had to come back to Matamoros. So I, you know, I apologize. Uh, I saw I said, Tad Hassey there. I said, Tad, apologize for me, but I, I have an emergency. I have to get back to, uh, to Matamoros. Uh, but I wanted to be here. Well, it, it, you know, it doesn't make sense, Sam. And again, more power to the people. Again, I, one of the things that I've always stated is, look, I'm putting my name out there. You have an option. You can either choose these rich assholes out there, you know, that don't give a rat's ass about you or your taxes or your appraised value. They don't They don't care. And I, I honestly still don't understand, Sam, why these people are spending so much money on this race. I mean, we, we're only going to meet four times a year, Sam. Four times a year. And and our only duties, you know, because a, a lot of these people, they're, they're, they're so stupid. A lot of you are, are going out there and telling people, well, we're going to lower your taxes. You don't, don't have that authority. 
You can't do that. But they're saying it because people buy into that crap. It's yeah. the same people that buy into the crap when they say, we lowered your taxes by 2 3%. The que sirve if you increase the appraised value of my property. Yeah. So the only authority that you have as uh, part of the appraisal district is, uh, you know, you get to, a, you know, oversee and appoint the individual, the appraiser. Uh, also, uh, you get to select the individuals that are on the, on the appeals board, the ones that you go and appeal to when they, when they, you know, put up these ridiculous, Sam, ridiculous is the, appraised values of property yeah. what's, what's happening right now is uh, there there's no representation on there because uh even when an individual goes out there to try to appeal uh the individual out there that is representing uh the county you know ultimately is the only one that speaks you know and cuts individuals when they want to speak and you know uh, negates anything that they're trying to say so it, that's the only thing that, that, you know, we're actually going to do is basically just oversee the whole matter, you know, just oversee that, uh, you know, things are being done right. That's the only authority we have. We don't have any power to lower anyone's taxes. Don't have that, that doesn't fall under our job description. It's just an overseers, you know, a board that oversees and makes sure everything's right. Oh. Now then they have no say so. No, uh, ultimately it's uh, the, uh, a state and uh, the local taxing entities around here that ultimately uh, decide. But again, it's good little uh, get me a vote talk. Yeah, it's a good tactic, I guess. It's not true. They're going to go based on the uninformed people. Hey, and that's what's unfortunate. Look, my opponent, one of my opponents in this race, my, my, both of my opponents in this race, uh, Bill Hudson, a millionaire. El otro, I, I don't know if you've even seen his signs, Alejandro Garcia Martinez. I don't know who the hell this guy is. He's a Mexican politician. So, I mean, people really here want someone from Mexico ultimately this going out there and deciding. And the, the bulk of his property, Sam, are in Mexico. His wealth comes from Mexico. It doesn't come from, from here locally. So it doesn't affect him that the price value of property here goes up. How long has he been around here, like in the in the area? Well, well, I mean, he's a Saint Joe individual. It's it's these groups that come from Mexico and they establish themselves here because right. you know they they're afraid. They, they I, I'm going to guess that he ran away from uh, the culture of uh, the uh, prosecution of a lot of individuals where they had wealth when they changed power, and they said, you know what? Let me go open a business in Brownsville, and uh, let me go set up shop in Brownsville. So it could have been some years ago. You know, that's what everyone is doing. Nobody wants to stay in Vallehermoso, Rio Bravo, San Fernando. They don't want to stay there. If you've got money, you, you know that, you know, you could be in trouble. So they all want to migrate over here, which is great. More more power and more uh, uh, economy for the city. But for you to say that, well, you know, I'm the best choice, you know, I'll be your voice out there. It's, it's not going to happen. But again, I put my name out there so individuals can have a choice. If you want to choose the same individuals, the same type of individuals that continuously, that continuously as they screw our community over, more power to you. But you had a choice. I mean, I had, I had to pay to be on this ballot. And I never like to pay. Unless it's for sex. <laughs> Joking. Then I don't want to take it out of context. Now it seems like, well, that's what's key. You said some very shady things, you know, and uh, you you say things, and uh, so, just, eh? more like many things. Many, <laughs> it's satirical. This is a show <laughs> that I understand. Like you're in a point, you're in a position that everything you say is going to be dissected. Well, you're the one that's like, ah, take it. Not that you take it as a joke, but. Like, let's be honest. Like, sometimes you're like, ah, let's kick back about this. But sometimes you're like, hey, you know what? Yeah, I'm laughing and everything, but I'm serious about certain topics. Oh, well, it's like I had a, I, yeah, well, I, yeah, you have to have fun. I have a, I'm in a school group chat with these preachers in, in Matamoros. And they said, they said, a ti te vamos a decir la Samaritana. They told me that, right? And yeah. I go like, why? They said, porque cinco maridos has tenido y el que ahorita tienes no es tu marido. <laughs> You know, we joke around. Funny. But we, 
we joke around with stuff like that, you know? But, you know, but some people are like, oh, like last night I got this message because I posted a picture with Gael. Huh? And last night I got this big old message from this guy who goes like, oh, uh, you know what the Bible says and uh, all this. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about, bro? I actually wanted, wanted to read it to you. And uh, <laughs> I can understand what it says. Oh? Huh? I can already assume what it says. Well, yeah. And uh, again, it's this guy. I, I don't know who the hell he is. I have no clue who he is. <laughs> and uh, he's, out of nowhere, sends me a message and goes like, uh, Sabes que lo más triste que tú sabes que haces mal y eso es peor. I'm going like, what? Papá es pastor, ¿verdad? I said, I'm a pastor. <laughs> and uh, it was hilarious. I actually want to share it in line. No. Juicio es estar enfrente de un tribunal. Le dije, ah, le dije, creo que usted no ha entendido lo que significa la palabra juzgar. Because, it, it, like, like, he's out there, blah, blah. So, y lo que se aprecia, lo que se aprecia no se es de buen gusto. Y usted sabe que las cosas de Dios no se hacen correcto simplemente. Ah, sigue juzgando. Si fuera, lo metería a la cárcel. Oh, my God. Ah, mandarlo al infierno. I'm going like, Angel, is that you? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's kind of trippy because after you know, I was playing along because I kind of like you know, you know me, I kind of enjoy, kind of enjoy the the theme, the attraction of it, the tension. I, of I it. enjoy egging him on, and then so after a while, you know, I look at his profile picture. You know, this is very very fat guy. You know, huge. You know, and I go like, una pregunta, ya que hablas de lo que se ve, ¿cuánto pesas? <laughs> Lo mismo que tú cuando te conocí. <laughs> yes. I said, uno de los dos corrigió eso. ¿Qué dice la Biblia de la gula, y la glotonería y la falta del dominio propio? <laughs> Because... The gist of the matter is, it's just so damn easy to look at everybody else's, what you consider faults and everything. You're fat as crap, you know? And you want to preach to me about my relationships or my friendships or whatever whatever I decide to have. And you can't even stop eating <laughs> to say, you know, you're clogging up your arteries on the day. And again. Nothing against fat people, and again, someone's going to say, "Oh, that's most fat shame." I'm not saying it's fat people, but fat again, no. I mean, you know, I have a, I have a lot of friends that are fat. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, matter of fact, they're all. <laughs> that's a good thing. I have a lot of black friends, <laughs> lot of black friends too. <laughs> I'm not racist. I have a lot of black I'm not, friends. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not racist. I got a lot of black friends. <laughs> and I got Sam that's like in between. <laughs> He's like part fat, part black. <laughs> <laughs> but I said like, you know, oh, I got to take this real quick. Hold on, one second. Bro. Yeah, I can't see anything. I'm going to say, there's nothing wrong with someone going out there and having a lunch with an individual. You know, and I even used. I, again, again, I've said this a thousand yeah. times. I totally agree with you. There's nothing wrong with going to have lunch with somebody. And the other hand, I've never taken my friend over to France. <laughs> I think you muted yourself.
I can't hear you. Oh, the call. <laughs> My bad. Sorry, sorry. Um, hey, so I'm assuming you're still looking. <clears throat> I'm assuming you're still looking for a secretary, huh? Well, yeah, we actually we we hired someone to come and help us out. You you know someone? No, I'm just assuming that because you're taking a call in the middle of the damn show, being rude. <laughs> I apologize. It, uh, I, it, it was Doctor Gutierrez. Oh, and uh, so again. And let me say, and I've stated this position all the time, and I got in trouble. I don't know if you were in that chat group when I said, I'm going to have lunch with Roy Los Santos. If you're like, oh, you're having lunch with him. Don't see it that way. You have to have conversations with these folks. I had lunch with Trey Mendes. I think the only difference, and like I, uh, like I told uh, Marisa, is uh, you've got to uh, go out there and tell people, guys. But the problem is, no one wants to come out and be open and transparent about things. You know, if that, what happens is then you let people start thinking, you know, all this stuff. It's like this thing with this fat guy, you know, he's going out there like, oh, and I also posted a picture with Gael. Oh, my God. You know, first of all, it's none of your damn business, you know, at all. But I can post any picture that I want. Now, if you want to feed into the picture and say, well, you know, this and this is, is what's happening going on, that's on you, baby. It's not on me. It's not on me. Well, lo que se ve, no, no se tiene que explicar. It was like, well, that's judgment. No se and, and, and the, lo que se ve, no se pregunta. I said, that's judgment, you know? And again, they go, no, that's not judgment. I said, like, yes, you're falling into the same thing that everybody else falls into. It's none of your damn business. First of all, it's none of your damn business. But I went through a long spiel. I kind of, you know, was enjoying the the tit for tat because <laughs> that's just who I am. But uh, again, welcome to welcome to do it publicly. So, uh, you know, to the guy uh, Javier Castro, if you want to come out here, I'll mention his name. If you want to come out here on a live and have a little discussion on on judging and on relationships and everything else, more power to you. I'll welcome you. I'll I'll talk to anyone. I have absolutely nothing to hide. I, I don't go out, out uh, las escondidas. The only time I do that is when I'm uh, traveling in Mexico. <laughs> but uh, I'm not allowed to do that anymore. <laughs> learning. Eh? You're learning that after 40 years. <laughs> I'm only 32. Because land equals power. Exactamente. And this is one of the things. Because why? I mean, the guy, this Alejandro Martinez Garcia, whatever the hell the guy's name is, an 18-wheeler. An 18 wheeler. I don't even know how that is allowed right here on the expressway and 13th street. You know, why isn't any of that, you know, out there and uh, individuals going out there and complaining about that? A big old, big old trailer for a position stand that pays nothing. That does basically very little Sam, but they're spending all this money. And again, because there's money to be made. You know, Which, it could be like a, a stepping stone, like some other positions. But why spend all this money? It's just way, way too much money. I, I, I don't get it. I mean, I'm going to run for, uh, if, uh, for appraisal board. Uh, you know, I'm still interested in BISD and I'm still interested in the city of Brownsville. And I'm still interested in probably a position with Cameron County. But, you know, all in time. But I'm not going to use one to do the, the, the other. I'm not going to change every single time an election comes around. One of you, except for one. Oh, Sam. <laughs> and what, I, uh, what did he reply? Well, the guy was all going nuts, you know? And again, like, well, you know, I'm trying to lose weight. I'm going like, well, then that's on you. I'm not asking you. I don't care. 
why do you think that I'm not trying? It's the same thing with like the monaguillo. Oh, I'm trying and you're not trying. This is where a lot of the religious people, uh, the religious people, they go straight down into the gutter because they have no clue or concept who Jesus was, have no clue or concept in uh, anything in regards to mercy or to grace, have no clue or concept of what the Bible is really talking about. And that's what's really, really, really pathetic and really, really sad because they fall into that group that anything that they do is okay, it's justifiable, and there's, uh, you know, I can justify my actions. But anything you do, Sam, or anything I do, oh, no, that's al infierno. The guy said he's going to send me to hell. <laughs> and then, well, oh, then it was so funny because then he said, uh, hey, um, well, you know, uh, where did your parents fail you, you know? Did they fail you? They can say que tu papá failed you. And like, oh, you're going there, bitch. So I said, like, oh, 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 I have a question for you. I think your parents failed you because they fed you too much. <laughs> or no te controlaron todo lo que estabas tragando. You know? And then like, oh, we're like, see how it's not appropriate to bring your parents? He goes, no tiene nada que ver con eso. Exactly. But they, they look at it like that, I mean, I'm vicious. You know, when I get into the debate thing and everything, I'm vicious. Don't take me there because I'll come full force. You know, it's like when um, when you're, uh, when someone, I'm not going to mention who, someone went out there and tried to say, oh, well, child molester and everything. I go like, didn't you steal money from viejitos? <laughs> Did you? you know, I'm going like, don't come at me with crap, you know, because I'll come at, back at you with facts. And again, I'm putting that always aside and everything else. But again, I'm not the I'm not the type of person you want to come and fight against. <laughs> yeah, it gets nasty when it becomes to like mudslinging. It becomes nasty, and again, if you're going to go down that road, like it's not like if anybody's perfect. I understand, like I'm not a perfect person, and I would assume you're not a perfect person, and anybody else is not a perfect person. And right. I'm pretty sure everybody has their own battles, and everybody's trying in their own ways. Some try a little bit harder than others. Some don't even try. Not gonna say names. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Uh, what's the pay? Uh, uh, Fifteen dollars a day plus lunch. And I have a question that I've been wanting to ask since like eighteen sixty six. I don't have an exact word to describe the situation that I have in mind, but it's been a long time since I've had this in my mind. You know what? Never mind. Good morning. You made me read all that for nothing. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I don't understand why these people are spending so much money on this race. Again, more power to the people. If they have that money to, to tirar or piss away. I'm not going to piss away my money on, on a race. I, 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 I've done enough by putting in $400. That's There's the reason why I'm spending money for it. No, it's not, it's not worth it. no lunch to fat. No lunch to fat. At, it is... I think. Oh, 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 yeah. She went to Porter. <laughs> I went to Porter. Fifteen dollars a day or an hour a day. Because you have four meetings and fifteen bucks a day, right? Yeah. Is that what you yeah, but you get you get to you get to you get to be with me all day. That's just pay in itself. That's awesome. Oh yes, uh, so what's your take on uh, the BISD uh, fiasco with uh, Marisa and Tim having lunch with a former superintendent? It doesn't look right. Um, I understand if they're trying to say like, hey, you know what, we're, we're we're trying to, I guess, figure something out. I really have no way. There's no way you can look look at it right. To be honest, I understand. maybe if they're friends, like long term friends. Yeah, okay, whatever. But uh, it doesn't seem like it, you know? And then when you don't clarify things, it's kind of doesn't help on your defense. Yeah. And, you know, and look, I, I, again, I had just, I just right now when I was on mute, had this conversation with Dr. Gutierrez. And, uh, you know, I've said it again, because I did uh, speak with uh, Marisa yesterday. She brought me a sign. I went to, I spoke with Marisa yesterday and I said, Marisa, just come on live. Huh? 
That's why I was laughing earlier because I see the sign behind you. Yeah, I said, uh, you, you know, I said, Maisa, come on alive and just say, tell people, guys, you know. But the problem is, I don't know what the advice they're getting. They're all being quiet about it. I mean, I, I've invited Tim. Tim, come on a show and talk to us about, you know, your position on things. Quiet, you know, all quiet. Cussing people out. Huh? <laughs> He's going to start cussing people out. Well, what, again, one of the things, and again, and like like I told, again, I, I was the one that posted the picture. Estrella Maggie ahorita. Huh? <laughs> Bring Maggie out right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's trippy because I, I was the one that posted the picture before, you know, and I got it from someone that they asked to post and they go like, oh, we don't want to post. And a lot of people didn't want to post. I said, I don't do that. Again, yeah. I, I am not a tapadera for anyone. I, and I love Marisa. I that looks a hella close picture too. Huh? That looks hella close. Yeah, and again, a lot of people think that they were set up and something. Maybe I have no idea, but I, I, I don't tap out for anyone. Go out there and explain it. You know, everything else on me comes out, and I, I do my best to try to explain it if I care to, and if I don't care to, I'll be very frank and say, you know, it's none of your business. Uh, I'm like I did to Javier Castro, whatever, the, whoever the guy that guy is. I said, none of your damn business, and uh, you know, I don't interfere in your life. Like, like it's like you say, if you don't put it out there, people are gonna start to start assuming. They're gonna yeah. start. Assuming. They're just gonna think the worst. Well, it's it's trippy Which because it might be true. But well, you know, here in Brownsville, people were sure. between Marisa and Rene and Tim. What connection could there be? Some primos? I would understand that, but I'm pretty sure they don't look nothing similar to each other. No, no. Well, look, it is like when the video was going around Brownsville where Eduardo was out there kissing me on the cheek, you know, people were like going, like, oh, and they're sharing it. Uh, the politicos were sharing it, you know, and I'm going like, guys, I posted those videos on my page. I did, you know, and y'all are taking them and putting them together. You can do whatever the hell you want to do with them. But they were on my page, you know, and again, it is what it is. But people will want to assume anything that they want. And this is part of the problem because the optics, and again, I'll admit this, the optics may not be the greatest. And it's yeah. the same. I told Marisa and Tim, guys, the optics may not be the greatest. That's the only thing I'm going to say. May not, just go out there and tell people, guys, this happened. When I went to have lunch with Trey, you know, while we were we were still, I mean, he was still mayor. We were still discussing. Well, I think it was even after. We, we had lunch uh, when we was mayor, then afterwards, I can't remember. Yeah. But, uh, you know, people were going, oh, you're, well, you were seen with Trey Mendes. I go like, well, you know about that because I posted the picture. You know, I posted the picture. I had lunch with uh, Roy de los Santos. I've had lunch and dinner with him several times. I post the pictures. I have nothing to hide. You know, I don't care. And uh, I, I continue to appreciate the conversations that I have. Last night, I ran into the mayor of Brownsville, John Cowan. You know, yeah. uh, went out there and a uh, 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 guy and I went to uh, Madeira and uh, John Cowan was there with Helen Ramirez and a bunch of people from the city of Brownsville. And they were going like, oh, crap. It was here. <laughs> but John is a very, very, you know, uh, John's a friend. Madeira. Uh, yeah. I'm surprised you went to Madeira. Well, I, well it, and I actually, it's kind of funny because the city I wonder of, who chose the spot. Huh? I wonder who chose the spot. But well, probably the mayor, the mayor, the mayor, and all of them were having these fancy little drinks, you know, with a umito and everything, and all this kind of crap. And I, and my first thought was, who's paying for that crap? We are, you know, we all are. And again, not dogging them for eating at Madeira. I was there. Gael and I were there. I we paid for our own meal, you know. Yeah. Oh. Who's that? Oh, I'm on a live. Get on that. Yeah. Put me on live. You are on live. Hola, Marisa. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, I, I, I had a conversation with uh, Dr. Gutierrez, and he's like, you know, why do people need to come and explain themselves? I said, that's not what I said. I didn't say that people needed to come and explain themselves. What I said is a lot of individuals out there, you know, either need to shut, shut the hell up, or, you know, realize that there's nothing wrong with having lunch with a any individual out there. Right. All we did, we just had lunch. 
we bumped into each other. I mean, if people want to believe other things, which they're assuming their own little stories, uh, I mean, by all, by all means, go ahead. Uh, I had a doctor's appointment. Uh, Tim takes me to my doctor's appointment because sometimes when they do stuff on, on me, I can't drive. Like, so like, like, did, like, like enemas or like, like. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. So anyway, took me to a doctor's appointment after that. We were done. And I told her, I said, can you take me over to the mall real quick to go buy some shoes? So he took me to the mall, went in right in front of the mall. The shoe store is mass. There's another picture that I showed you yesterday. I, I uh, tried to share it with Maggie. I told her I had a better picture of, of ourselves, you know, uh, which was a selfie that we took when we bumped into each other in front of the mall. And you can see the shoe store in the back. Yeah, I think he you know? took it, no? He did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, took the picture. I showed it to you. I, I had told her if she wanted it for me to forward it to her. She said she was good. I said, okay, fine. No problem. Uh, after that, he's like, what are y'all doing here? Told him what we were doing there and that we were on our way to go eat at Chick-fil-A. And then he's like, Chick-fil-A, no. You know, I say, why don't you join me here? And he pointed at this restaurant right across, right next to the shoe store at the mall. And we went in there, ate. As we were leaving, he introduced us to the sheriff from Hidalgo, which I'm surprised the person didn't take a picture of that. Also, you know, they might have said that I was in cahoots with Hidalgo as well. Uh, met the guy, walked out, and we left. He went on his way, we went on ours. And that was it. Came back, that was it. Well, you know, again, I, I've I've gotten into like discussion, not discussion with people, but people are like, oh, I don't well, you're having lunch with these individuals and they're the enemies of the city. So I just, well, first of all, I can have lunch with whoever the hell I want. That's right. I had lunch with you yesterday. Yeah, you, you, know? you ate my food. Yeah, I don't, sure. I don't, was, no, that, that no was, you that took, something. You, you ate my food. But that's okay. <laughs> I forgive you because I'm a Thank very, you. a very forgiving person. As the, no, again, again, one of the things that I've shared and, and I've shared this early, the optics of the matter is just go out there and, and, and tell people, guys, so it was, it was a lunch. And again, as a candidate, you're free to have lunch with anyone you want. I, I, I think a lot of the concerns from a lot of the individuals are that they feel that Rene Gutierrez has hurt the district. Right. And, uh, they feel for uh, board members who are seeking uh, election or seeking a position here is they want to do away with the older administration and, uh, right. and, and push and move forward towards uh, some, something different. Uh, right. Do, do you think that a lot of individuals in the district uh, are hurting because of a lot of the decisions that were made under the Gutierrez administration? Yes. I agree. I mean, there's some, you know, and like a lot of people are like, well, you know, well, what are you going to do about it? Well, heck, I'm not even there yet. You know, why don't you ask the people that are there right now? You know, why don't you ask the people that have been on the board? You know, I said, I can't answer that because I haven't been there yet. Well, what well, the, well, okay, uh, uh, and another thing, you know, like, yeah. like, uh, they're, they're like, well, now it's like, okay, so I need to ask who do I need to ask who I can go have lunch with or breakfast or whatever? I'm always having lunch or breakfast or whatever. It is nothing new. Tim and I go and have breakfast three, four times a week. You know, it's like, that's nothing new. Well, one of the you big, know, always yeah. One of the biggest concerns is because, you know, they are consolidating schools right now. They're closing schools. Uh, you know, they, they, they try to use these little words, the fancy words, and you know, oh, everyone's going to be okay. Everyone's going to be sent to a, a different place. But uh, they're closing down the schools, which, again, uh, I've had conversations with Jessica Gonzalez in regards to it. I said, like, I know exactly where you're at right now in this position because we were faced with the same uh, situation back when I was on the board. And, you know, we were put I in got, a I got one better for you. Mm -hmm. I'm a product of one of the schools being closed. I worked for BISD when the first schools got closed. You know, back then, they told us from one day to the next, you know what? You still have your job, and this is the kicker. This time around, they're placing you somewhere. You know, okay, you haven't lost your job, but they're going to place you somewhere. Okay, back then, there was no placement. Back then, we had to go out and look and see who had an opening. Then we had to go and apply, and then we had to go and interview. I interviewed at Pace, didn't get it. 
I went and I interviewed and interviewed at Skinner, and that's where where I saw that's where I got the position. So back then, I I know what they're going through because I went through it. They closed down my campus as well, well and we had to go out and look for a job. Yeah, I think my my concern is uh, my concern back then when I was on the board and we had to close uh, three schools, and uh, my concern now is. What, what brought us to this position? Why are we here now that we have no other choice? And again, like I told Jessica Gonzalez, I understand you have no other choice at this point. But what brought us here? And, and the problem is that's never been brought to light. That's one of the reasons why, especially right now after COVID, because this district received millions and millions of dollars. It received ESSER funds. It received money from Elon Musk and other uh, private organizations out there. Millions upon millions of dollars. I would dare say a quarter of a million dollars were received by this district. And we're still $36 million in the hole. So where did the money go? And why wasn't that money used to retain the staff, retain students or, you know, upgrade students uh, facilities or, or kept the schools open? Right. So, and, and, and I'm sorry, but the majority of the board right now, uh, I think it was five to two voted against an audit. There has I'm to be an, an audit. There I always get audited where I work, so I'm for an audit. Yeah, so you are for a forensic audit. Yes. There has to be. And again, right. the, the, the issue with the majority of the individuals on the board is they adamantly want to protect. And the, the thought, and this is, again, this is where the thought of the community starts to go, you know, when, when when there's no clarification, Marisa, when there's no one out there saying, hey, this is the situation, when there's nothing like that, then people start trying to connect dots. And I think that this is one of the things that I think Maggie's doing and a lot of the individuals out there are doing because right. this, this majority, they protected uh, uh, Dr. Gutierrez. They voted to extend his contract a couple of times. They thought everything was uh, great under the uh, Gutierrez administration. Yet nobody wants to be accountable in regards to what happened to all that money. And it was under this administration, this pre previous administration, and they voted no. So the thought of a lot of people out there is that, well, you know, you're out, uh, you're out there trying to seek office and you're meeting with the individual that a lot of individuals here, this is, and I'm saying, again, I, I was not in there. I don't have the back numbers, but a lot of the individuals here uh, think that, uh, you know, it was part of a uh, sloppy administration and uh, a forensic audit, a, a real down deep enema type <laughs> cavity search type of audit. It needs to be done in this in, in, in BISD. I mean, it, honestly, it needs to be done at every single taxing entity here uh, locally in the city of Brownsville, especially BISD. Yeah. yeah, I get it done at work. I work for UPS and we get it done all the time. They feel you. Uh, ask her about uh, her your ties. Uh, now, uh, well, one of the questions is your ties to uh, individuals in the Glass Palace, and I, I'm I'm thinking that they're referring to uh, your relationship with uh, the human HR director. Okay. What about it? Uh, I don't know. What uh, what uh, what do you? Th what's your take on uh, becoming a board member and ha uh, having uh, individuals at, at the Glass Palace that are, are related to you? Well, I got I got individuals all over BISD that are related to me. You know, unfortunately, I married into a family that is uh, into education. Educated race. And, and yeah, they're all educators. You know, I've got principals, I've got assistant principals, I've got secretaries, I've got paraprofessionals. I mean, I, and they've been there for many years, way before I thought about running for school board. Hundred percent. You know. And that's the, and that's so, the, and I think that's, that's, and again, I'm not trying to give, get you your answer. I want you to answer it, but th that's correct. One of the things that a lot of people need to understand guys, and, and you know, I, I'm not responsible for a lot of things that Sam does and Sam's my cousin, you know, <laughs> I want to step away from that. I think what they're trying to ask is like having a person in HR, because there has been instances before where the board members are kind of like a, to move people around or kind of have like that extra arm in certain places they'll be like hey you know what i can move you to a certain department if you do this for me i think that's what they're referring to i said the favorite I got a better for you sam i got a better for you uh my husband has been applying for a position 
with the ISD uh, a couple of times already. Now, wouldn't you think that if I had any ties or any pool with the HR that is now placed there, don't you think my husband would have gotten the position way before? Because I'm not on the board yet, okay? I've been dealing with this lawsuit for the past three years, and he's he's been applying. He hasn't received it. He hasn't gotten any. He's still a he's still a teacher. So don't you think if I had that that pool, like people say, oh, you know, she's related to the HR, blah blah blah. Don't you think that my husband would have already gotten a position way before then? Understood. Yeah. And just to clarify, I did not send that question. I, I was just kind of interpreting whatever they're trying to ask. Um, yeah. But I'm assuming that the hiring process, it's like several levels. But I'm guessing HR is a start up. I've never applied for BISD, so I don't know what their process is. Well, uh, let me, and let me say this. And, and, uh, again, the line, the nepotism circle, you know, there's this uh, ne nepotism chart that goes into this little thing. And, and I, 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 I know Marisa and I know uh, Dr. Gallegos, and I know that that nepotism ball does not fall anywhere close to the danger zone <clears throat> and and I, I say that as the because i, I know the situation I, i'm not a fan of the gallegos and I, i've been very very vocal about it but uh i don't think uh, that uh, it, it's an issue in regards to any decision making process and uh, again that's one of one of the things that, that uh, i i'd hope that uh, a lot of folks understand that we need to constantly you know, maintain a transparent type of system out there, especially in the hiring process. But as of right now, and again, as of right now, I have personally not uh, heard any uh, complaints as recent. And again, haven't talked to Maggie uh, in regards to the HR department, in regards to the hiring process out there. I have not. And again, I'm not a fan of the people there, but again, not heard uh, any complaints on it. Like I would understand like them, like, having family members in the district considering they hire about like six thousand people and this is a town like about a, over a hundred and like ninety thousand so they're bound to be relatives around there you know but that's Dos just primos. assumption Dos dos primos. Uh, yeah. the same thing happens with pub and the same thing happens at like walmart and H E B. like everybody has tries to get their pool even in amphos so, uh, uh, what else are you doing to prepare yourself for the May election, Marisa? Well, uh, we have a forum tonight. Uh, we're going to be, it's uh, me and uh, Peña and the uh, TSC people that are running. Where is that at? That's going to be at the Democratic, hold on, let me get it for you. Is it open to the public? Yes. Might want to be that. Funny seeing you there. <laughs> You're gonna come out on. Huh? Yeah, but I I, a... I don't go out until like four or five days from now or something. I can't remember. I don't even remember. Yeah. I, I think I I'm uh I'm uh, phone banking. I'm uh, gonna start block walking. Um, I'm having meet and greets here and there. Wherever they call me, I go in and show up. Good. Uh, my my forum is on the twenty third. It's next week, so that's going to be interesting. I'm actually excited to see these people there. Great answer. Uh, what's going on? Yeah, down? that's your forte. You like forums. I love, I love them. What's going on, Sam? It's too late. You. But that's what happens when you get here late. <laughs> <laughs> what day in May is the election and early uh, early voting? Early voting starts April twenty second. Through the 30th and uh, election day is May 4th. May 4th. May the 4th be with you. Uh, well, again, I have my Marisa sign behind me. And uh, good question for Marisa. Do you think the same issue, they might have the same issues as what happened last time where they were having like discrepancies? What was that? I can't hear you. Do, do you think that they're going to have the same issues this time in regards to voter fraud? Well, I, and I've been asked that question before. If uh, that's the case, I know what to look for. And I will look for it. And if I find it, I will let you all know. Well, did you see, did you uh, uh, follow the um, the Cam Cameron, uh, Cameron County primary elections? Uh, no. 
Did you see how many mail-in ballots went to one candidate and not to the other candidates? I didn't see that. Let me tell you. It's uh, it's horrible. And uh, it's very indicative. Uh, I think you, you had a candidate that took like three or 400, something like that, mail-in ballots, and the other guys took like five or six. Wow. So it's real because one of the things that I've always stated when I ran for office and I said, guys, uh, you always run a race understanding that you're already 500 votes in the hole. Because I think that that's the number of votes that they control. They control 500 votes. That's my idea. Anything else, Sam? Not for the moment. Marisa, thanks for coming on. Yes, sir. And is there anything you need? Let me know. I mean, thank again, you. There's go no, out and vote, people. We need everybody out there. Everyone needs to go out and vote. As the, every vote is going to count, especially in a vote where in the first round, you know, came up with what, eight votes, two votes. So please go out and vote and take uh, family and friends out to vote. Guys, este, we've had a, a very well-rounded show this morning and uh, great calls coming in. Uh, Sam, thanks for coming on, Sam. No problem, man. Anytime. Guys, have a great, great day. Uh, see you tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock in the morning. Guys, be good to each other. Continue to be good to be. Thank God bless. You. Bye. Bye.